Hi class. Hi again, it's Travis. In this module, we're going to be talking about why accessibility matters. Here on this screen, we see the handicap symbol or the symbol for disability, and he's transitioning to the FAST symbol for disability. And just as wheelchair use and mobility issues are a spectrum disorder, we are looking at um, accessibility as a spectrum as well. On this slide, we see two examples of staircases. We see the staircase on the right, which is where I see so many of our websites and documents, which is we build out a staircase, we build out a website, and then at a later point, we're told that we have to have accessibility or we have to make our content accessible to people with disabilities, and we'll just kind of slap on some accessibility features at the last minute. And oftentimes, those accessibility features are not necessarily very useful to people with, access with disabilities, just like the staircase is practically dangerous for people in a wheelchair. On the other side, we have a design space where an architect had put forethought and design, accessible design into his, uh, his, this particular space. And what we see here is a space that has a wheelchair ramp and a staircase. And it shows that you can be accessible and elegant and beautiful at the same time when you, when you produce and when you design a space with accessibility in mind from the very beginning. And that's where we really should be. We should be thinking about from the ground up, how do we build accessibility into our spaces, into our documents, and into our websites, versus kind of slapping it on haphazardly at the very end. Here we see a group of pictures. These are all famous people, and it may surprise you that each of them has a disability. For starting at the upper left corner, we see Frida Kahlo, who was a famous Mexican artist born at the turn of the century during the Mexican Revolution. And she was someone who contracted polio at a very young age. She walked with a limp her entire life, and she was also in a trolley car accident where a handrail speared her abdomen. It was in the hospital that she learned to paint in a full body cast. Next, we have our founding father, George Washington, and our first president as well. Based on his writings, we believe that he also had dyslexia and something called dysgraphia, which impacted his ability to read and write. But nonetheless, he was a dynamic leader for this country. Next, we see Tom Cruise, one of our favorite actors in this country. He also, like George Washington, had dyslexia. He talks about in his memoirs being completely or practically illiterate in high school and learning how to read to try to get more roles in Hollywood. He knew that his ability to read was directly linked to his success in Hollywood. Next we see FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was also um, the longest serving president in this country. He's also had a uh, physical disability, had a mobility issue. He, like Frida Kahlo, contracted polio at a young age. It was, was relatively common during that era. And he also contracted a spinal disorder during his presidency that left him unable to control his bladder and bowels. And for that matter, he spent most of his presidency in a wheelchair. On the bottom left, we see Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian of all time. He also had ADHD. Um, he remembers, he, he uh, reaccounts his experience in school and a first grade teacher coming into his classroom and saying that, he got to take his riddle in. He was completely embarrassed by that. And his second grade teacher telling his mom and him that he would never amount to anything because he uh, could not sit still and focus. Next, we have Stephen Hawking, one of the most celebrated cosmologists of our generation, who contracted ALS at the, at, uh, the age of, um, in his early 20s. And he was only given a few more years to live. He ended up living a long life. He used, a, used assistive technology designed by Intel, which tracked his cheek movements. He was able to give interviews and write dissertations using assistive technology and the help of some graduate students. Next, we have um, Stevie Wonder, who is one of the most celebrated musicians of the 20th century, who was blind. He, at birth, he was um, premature, and he was put into an incubator in an oxygen-rich environment and in that environment, his retina is detached, leaving him blind from day one. It shows that sometimes the treatments for disability can be just as uh, harmful as the symptoms. But at a year, uh, 11 years of age, he was able to sign his first record deal. He also won a Grammy and an Oscar award for some of the music he's created. 
And lastly, we have a somewhat controversial um, person in terms of disability is Leonardo da Vinci, the Renaissance man himself. He, based on his writings and a number of scholars, even here at UCLA, are saying that most likely he suffered from dyslexia based on his, his, his writing and um, his mirror writing was not necessarily a code but a, just a more natural way of writing for him. And it also would explain that how his ability to have deep spatial reasoning, which is one of the hallmarks of dyslexia. All right, so what do we, so these people are all individuals who had disabilities who were also able to achieve greatness. And that is where we want our people with, um, our students here at UCLA who have disabilities to be able to achieve their potential, just as these people did. A lot of these individuals, they overcame um, their disabilities by you know money or by special education or just by being dynamic people themselves. But the reality of the situation in this country is much different for a majority of people with disabilities. Here on this page, we see some of the issues that are facing the disabled community in America. Um, it's, it's like a, uh, a vicious cycle of disability and poverty. Here we see poverty is at 29% for people with disabilities. That is about twice the number or twice the, av the national average of 14%. So if you have a disability, you're more likely, twice as likely to, to live in poverty. Employment is only at around 19 to 20%. That is meaning only one out of five people with a disability is employed. Based on one study um, that followed 11,000 students out of special education into colleges, they found that about 50% of those students were dropping out in the first two years. Incarceration, you're about four times more likely to be incarcerated if you have a disability. There's also been a lot of evidence to show that there's a strong correlation between dyslexia and incarceration. And not surprisingly, depression is two to 10 times more likely for people with disabilities. So this is what is going on in the country currently. And it's in stark contrast to the previous slide where we saw individuals who were able to achieve such um, high levels of, of status in both society and culture, the arts, entertainment. So I think that when you think about disability, I want you to think about both, both the people who have achieved great things um, not necessarily in spite of disability, sometimes because of their disability, and also the reality of the situation in this country around poverty, low employment, and high dropout rates for college students. On this slide, we're looking at some of UCLA's data. Um, this, is, this is only the students who are receiving accommodations at CAE. This is from the 2016-2017 year. Um, according to CAE, they're at around 3,500 students in the year 2018. But I do want to draw your attention to a few of these issues or a few of these disabilities that are on the rise. Uh, if you look at psychological disability, it's at 1,300. This uh, plurality of our students are suffering from psychological disability. This is only um, going to go higher as, um, with, our, with each sequential class as psychological disability is on the rise in the Gen Z generation in general. We are talking about depression, social anxiety disorder, panic, PTSD, self-harm, eating disorders. These are all things that uh, this early, this young generation is dealing with in much higher numbers, um, at least being diagnosed in much higher numbers than previous generations. I also want to draw your attention to ADHD, which is 641. This is actually probably higher on this campus than um, this is letting on in that we do know that around 11% of elementary school boys are being diagnosed with ADHD. The other one I wanted to point out is autism at 45. Autism spectrum disorder is another disability that's on the rise with each year. Um, we do know as of 2018 that in about one in 68 10 year olds is being diagnosed on the autism spectrum disorder. Um, this has actually got, gone higher in younger generations but there hasn't been as much conclusive evidence around um, the actual numbers for, for, for kids who are younger than around eight or nine years old. So it just shows you that on this campus, there are around 3,500 students receiving accommodations, but based on exit, exit data, not exit poll data, but actual um, survey data done by U UCOP, University of California Office of the President, 
around 16% or, or 7,000 students at UCLA do have a disability or declaring a disability. About half of those students, as you can see here, are receiving accommodations. All right, so I want you to think about when you design and develop, I don't want you to think of of disabilities or students with disabilities or people with disabilities as a small group or something special that needs to be um, that you need to put you're putting effort in to service a small number of people we're actually servicing a large contingent of the student population as well as the faculty and staff population here at UCLA um, so I thought I hope these numbers gave you a little bit of insight into why disability and accessibility is so important at UCLA and in the country at large